دونك ميلود عبيد وسامة اونيفرسيتي بن الحاج عندي مشاهد دونك يبغى نو بارلي فيزيكال بروبرتيز اوف ذا دار تي اي سيلينيون كات من دافالس كومبون So thank you for this opportunity to present my work on the physical properties of a new Vanderbilt material. So to the, the, the dimensional transition method are exciting new class of materials due to different applications. So they can allow the miniaturization of devices, so we can make very small devices. They can also enhance so the quality of scanning images, they have also great flexibility, so yeah, we can so make this kind of deformation without breaking the device. So they have good applications in the filtration of water, and so they, they can be applied for quantum computing. So this 2D class of materials is, is growing, and it covers so a very large range of uh, class of materials, including some insulators, semiconductors, and metals. So 2D compound, they can be metals, insulators, and semiconductors, which allows a different kind of applications. So here we can see so the effect of uh, the number of layers of the same material. So the same material with, within different layers can change. So here we can see that for one layer, it's a direct bent gap semiconductor, and for four layers, it's a, a different kind. It's an indirect semiconductor. Second thing that by changing the number of layers, we can change also the value of the bent gap, which lead to different applications. Another interesting so application of 2D materials, they can be used for gas sensing. So if uh, a molecule is absorbed by a surface of 2D material, this will change its band gap and we can so detect this gas. Another interesting so effect is the quantum hole effect. So everyone is, I assume, is familiar with classical hole effect where we have a linear relationship between so the resistance and the magnetic field. So this is classical hole effect. So the interesting thing in 2D material that we have this kind of dependence. It's like a step. And here so we, we, we depict the difference between the classical one and the quantum one. So these materials, due to their semiconductor nature, so they can be applied for solar cells applications. They can be used for so making different kind of light because we can tune the band gap and the color is so directly related with the, the value of the band gap so we can make that in different colors. And today we will talk about so the potential of 2D materials as thermoelectric materials. So thermoelectric materials, they can transform heat to electricity. So let's start by the, the ground state of uh, the, the compound that I choose in this study. So we have three kinds of atoms, zirconium, titanium, and selenium. So they form a monoclinic structure, so the space group is number 10. And this is the different atomic position of this. So it, as you can see in the 
figure B, it's a layout, a layout compound, and we have Van der Waals interactions along the C direction. So, yeah, as I said, so this is the ground state. In, in a recent study, so they suggest that maybe the crystal structure would be like trigonal, and it is a solid solution where so titanium and selenium would be would be distributed randomly. But by using this crystal structure in the simulation code, uh, so it gives the, the first the first structure. So we will so stay with the first one, and there is no need to go to, to this one. So the method that I use, I use the code vn 2 k and for the thermoelectric properties, I use what's top code. So to solve the Schrodinger equation, to find the energy or the ground state energy of uh, any compound, so we need to solve the Schrodinger equation. So in the vn 2 k code, so we divide the unit cell into regions. So regions, as you can see here, around the, the nucleus, and so the interstitial region between different circles. So within the circles, we use uh, spherical harmonics as a base to describe our wave function. And in the interstitial region, so we use plane waves. So this is the method. So LAPW, augmented plane wave method. So we divide the, the unit cell in two parts parts around the atoms and the interstitial region. In the interstitial region, we will use plane wave. So, okay, so uh, that's the dimensional theory. So says that we can have the ground state energy by using the density of any, any, any structure. So we don't need to go to the detail just by using so, the density of the system. We, we can have the ground state energy. So we have the kinetic energy due to the motion of electrons, this one, T. And we have the interaction between so the electrons and the nucleus. And we have so the repulsion between different, different electrons. And at the end, we have the exchange correlation due to the non-symmetry of the wave function. So at the end, what we need to use this code, we need to define the crystal structure by introducing so, the space group and atomic position, and to specify the exchange correlation model. And using this, so we can have any property of any material at any time. So let's start with structural properties. So this is a paper that shows that it's a monoclinic or orthorhombic structure. So we have C different than B different than C. And B, by changing the, the last atoms, so we can have an angle different from 90 degree. So it's not all the time 90 degree. So here, uh, we run an optimization of the volume, and we found that the equilibrium volume is around 1,000 bore cube. And we found the bulk modulus of 76 GPA, which means it's a very small value which means that this material will be very soft. It's normal for 2D materials to be soft because they, are, they have like a layered shape. For the electronic properties, so here we used a modified Beck Johnson potential. So we know that DFT has a major problem in predicting the bent gaps. So if you use a normal DFT, we will find a metallic state, which is not true. So this compound is not a metal, it's a semiconductor. So we have a new way to solve this problem by using MBG, which means modified Beck Johnson potential. So as we can see here, sorry. So uh, the bend gap will be between gamma point and R point. So it's an indirect, indirect uh, semiconductor. We evaluate also the density of state. So the majority of the density of state, first of all, so we have a bent gap here between valence and conduction band. And second thing, so the major contribution is from the orbital of t, uh, t, titanium in that color. This is the strongest contribution. 
and the contribution after it's in green is from D of zirconia. So the electronic properties of this material will be mainly, and okay, so even selenium has a good contribution, so it will be like a mixture. So all, all atoms so contribute to electronic properties. Okay, so this is what, what I mentioned before. So if we use PBU salt, it's a, like a classical DFT exchange correlation. So we will find a semi-metallic state, which is wrong. So by using Beck-Johnson potential, so we can have an indirect bend gap along gamma L direction. So let's move to the chemical bond. So we studied the topology, which means the shape, the 3D shape of the uh, charge density. So uh, the study of the topology starts by, so it's an analysis of the charge density in many points. So we start by uh, obtaining so the attractors, which means so the center of each atom. And after that, so we, we, we evaluate so different critical points. And after that, we can integrate the volume and the charge of each atom. So this is the study of topology. So here I depict the electron localization function in two planes. So in the plane 0, 1, 0, so we can see a bond <coughs> between selenium and titanium. And the density between the two atoms, it's, it's, it's not very high and it's not very low, so it's in, in the middle. And the same thing in the plane 0, 2, 0. So we have also another bond between zirconium and selenium. So here, so the different uh, critical points found. So we found seven different bonds in this compound. So as we can see here, so the densities are small and positive, and the, the Laplacian is also positive. So when we have a positive Laplacian, it's an ionic bond. And when it is negative, it is a covalent bond. So here we don't have negative values, which means that mostly this compound has like an ionic to covalent extent nature. So the, the bond between selenium atoms, they are in the center, and between selenium and titanium, and selenium and zirconium, they are closer to selenium and uh, zirconium respectively. So this, okay, one of the beauty of topology analysis is that we can see the position of different bonds. So by performing topology analysis, so we can see all the bonds that exist in the material. So the bond one is between selenium, and uh, the bond four is between so selenium and uh, titanium, and so on. So these are the different bonds that exist in this class of materials. <coughs> so here, so we evaluate the oxidation state and the volume occupied by each atoms. So we see that uh, the biggest volume occupied here will be by selenium. And we have a charge transfer to selenium from zirconium and titanium. So the negative charge means that uh, they, they, they got some electrons from other atoms. So from this, we, we can evaluate the ionicity ratio is 43%, which means that the covalent character will be uh, greater than ionic one. And we can evaluate also the flatness. The flatness means, so the difference between the maximum of the charge density and the minimum of the charge density. So here we see it's very small, 2%, which means that our charge density is very flat, which means that we have localized bonds. Now let's move to uh, the main topic of uh, this presentation, which is the thermoelectric properties. So a thermoelectric, as I said, is a material that can transform heat into electricity. And the efficiency of each atom so is evaluated by this factor that we call the figure of merit, Zt. So, it's, uh, so it's, it depends on the uh, electric conductivity, the C back coefficient, and the thermal conductivity. So, so 
So to have a very high efficiency, so to have a very high efficiency, so we need a very high electrical conductivity, a very high C back coefficient, and a, a very small thermal conductivity. So this is the key for a very high uh, efficiency material. So here. So, so we evaluate here so the Seebeck coefficient as a function of doping. So we evaluate for the whole doping and for electron doping. So as we can see in the values, so an electron doping will be better than P doping. And we will have uh, high performance around so 10 to the power 18 times maybe 3. So this is the best doping values for high efficiency. So let's move to thermodynamic properties to have an idea about so thermal conductivity. So here, so we evaluate so heat capacities. So they are close to each other. And so here is the birth modulus at 300 Kelvin. So again, so we have very soft values, very small values, sorry, which means that we have a very soft material. And we have not a very large value of divide temperature, which means that we will have weak thermal conductivity, which will be very beneficial for thermoelectric performance. So here we depict so the volume change versus temperatures. So at low temperatures, it's a linear dependence, and after that we have a linear dependence, and in the figure B, so we depict heat capacity. So at very high temperatures, we, we reach the De Jong uh, PT limit. So at the end, so this is a new study where they evaluate thermoelectric properties of these materials. So the, the ZT that they found is very small, but as we saw in this picture, that it can be improved. So here they found a CV coefficient, so here. So it's around minus 250, and sorry. And here we 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 saw that we can reach we can reach 10 minus 400. So it's around two times. So by including a good doping to this system, we expect that we can improve so the efficiency of this material. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Milad Abid Rusama from the University of the Bushent. Any question? If you have any questions, French or English, no problem. You can ask your question. You can ask your question. You can pose the question. Si Abid a une petite remarque, vous avez dû numéroter les slides. Parce que j'ai une petite question. Euh, si vous pouvez me passer oui, une, les, les, les plans 0, 1, 0 et 0, 2, juste une petite remarque. Voilà, ici, est-ce que, est que le 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, c'est à peu près le même plan c est, c est, Il est parallèle. Oui. Donc et on est en décal et puis euh, donc vous avez les, les mêmes phénomènes, donc il n'y a pas de. Non, le, 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 the atoms in the different plane, the, they are not the same, as you can see here. So the bonding, the bonding here is between T and selenium, and here between zirconium and selenium. Mais le plan réticulaire de 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, c'est le même plan. C'est-à-dire que c'est décalé, vous le décalez, donc c'est est, est parallèle. Oui, vous voulez, le, le milieu est à la cellule. Oui, c'est le, le milieu, mais je veux dire que c'est à peu près le même phénomène, non Là. Donc le ZR, maintenant, je vous le ZR, je vous le ZR, maintenant, je vous le dis. Maintenant, je vous le dis. Le ZR, en vert. Et dans la fausse, on marche sur la face. Donc, je trouve la bande. Mais le plan, il est parallèle, donc c'est ça. Oui, c'est vrai. J'ai fait tous. Oui. C'est ça, je vais trouver les bandes. Donc, on a le plan de la tente. Il y a pas de la tente. Donc, la tente, on a le fausse. Donc, le 0-1. C'est bon, c'est décalé, donc... Oui, c'est bon. Des questions, s'il vous plaît Allez-y, allez-y, monsieur. Je 
Wunderwald, je sais si vous avez C'est curiosité scientifique. Pourquoi on les appelle Wunderwald Pourquoi elle s'est composée Pourquoi elle la distance là-bas. Donc il y en a qui ont Non, pourquoi on les nomme Wunderwald Les Wunderwald, c'est des liaisons très faibles. Voilà, c'est très faible, c'est peut-être aussi lié à ça. Ah, d'accord. Donc là, tu peux, selon cet axe, oui. Donc là, la distance qui est là, donc l'interaction, quand tu comme la FA. Donc les interactions là, c'est bonne de Donc euh, l'étude structurelle là, là donc le, le A ou le B a des plateformes là, qui va l'expérimenter. Donc ça, c'est à des plateformes qui viennent de Donc là, là, donc, là, 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 donc il faut introduire l'interaction de bonne de Et comme ça, vous allez avoir un C. C'est l'interaction très faible dans le domaine des matériaux. Et donc, une table de fleurs sur le code Oui, bien sûr. Une table de fleurs. Ou tu ouvres les sacs, donc tu as Très bien. C'est mieux de dire ça. Et les thanks, donc. Je vais le présenter.